Now that we've covered what a database is and what it can be used for, let's now have a look at the SQL language. SQL was first introduced in 1974 and is still being extensively used to date. The latest release dates to 2011. It is a declarative language belonging to the fourth generation programming language. It provides a high level of abstraction, making it a powerful, versatile, and programmer-friendly language. The language consists of two parts, the data definition language and the data manipulation language. The data definition language is used to create and modify a database. If we want to create a database like the one we see on the right, we first need to create the database itself within the database engine. This can be done using the SQL keywords create database, and here we name our database examples. Let's actually create a database within MySQL. And so to do so, we're going to use the MySQL Workbench software, which is a graphical interface to the MySQL database. Um, and so here we simply uh, type the words that we just saw. So create database, and then we are going to name our database examples. Then here, use examples is just saying to the database that we want to use this database as default. So that will avoid us to actually type examples every time we want to reach the database. So I execute these lines. We can see that everything went fine. We have little uh, green uh, check marks here to see that everything was fine. And if I refresh the schemas, we now see that we have an empty database called examples. Now that the database is created, we want to include some tables. To create a table, we simply need to type create table. Here, for example, we create the table students, where we have an ID, which is going to be an integer, a first name, which is going to be a string, so varchar of length of 50 characters, last name with the same characters, and then uh, we're going to set our primary key to being ID. Here again, we can execute the same command in uh, MySQL, and so here I already typed create table with students and then the variables. Um, and so if I execute this comment, and I'll get uh, an OK answer, telling me that everything has been created. It took uh, just a, a fraction of a second to create. Now if I refresh my schema, you can now see that I have a table called students, where the columns are the fields that I declared. And so now that the students table is created, let's create the classes table. <coughs> um, so the classes table has uh, the ID field, the academic year, and then the classes. And our primary key will be the set of ID and academic year. So I ex execute this line. And now if I refresh my schema, we can now see that we have two tables and then with the same columns that we just declared. So now we have two tables in our database. If you followed carefully, you might have noticed that I've left out the date of birth uh, field within my uh, students table. And so uh, if we want to add it now that the table is already created, we can use the alter table keywords to actually do that. And so here, for example, I have alter table students where we're going to add the column date of birth of type date and we're going to set the not null constraint into it. So we can run this uh, alter table command within MySQL as well. And so uh, if I execute the command here, uh, so this is the students table before I altered the table. And so now if I alter, uh, if I update the schema, we can see that the date of birth has been added here. And if I go into the uh, alter table properties of the MySQL Workbench, for example, here, we can see that, uh, well, the, the different properties that we've set to the, the table. And so here we can see that the date of birth is in fact not null here. 